The Worst Years of My Life, Middle School, Chapter 33. How hard could it be? After what had happened last night, I knew I had to put the game on hold. No more breaking the rules on purpose. No more Operation Wraith, for the time being. No Zoom for sale, and no fighting with Bear either. If I couldn't be good, I could at least try to be a normal person for a while. I mean, how hard could it be? You're going to regret this, Leo told me. Besides, Jules doesn't want you to be normal. She just wants you to be yourself. Doesn't she say that all the time? Yeah, well, myself made my mother cry tonight, I said. I'm just going to lie low for a little while, that's all. Just until things get a little better around here. Sure, Leo said. Right after you win the lottery and Jules turns into a famous artist and Georgia has a personality transplant and Bear gets amnesia and never comes home. Forget it, dude. You're living in a fantasy world. Look who's talking, I said. And that's another thing, Leo told me. What am I supposed to do while you're off being Mr. Normal? I don't know, I said. What do imaginary people do in their spare time? Leo yawned. I mean, it's not like I'm going anywhere. You can still talk to me. We just won't be playing the game. But we're only getting started here, he said. You can't quit now. I'm not quitting, I told him. I'm taking a time out. For how long? I don't know, I said again. We're just going to have to wait and see, okay? But Leo didn't say anything. Okay? Still nothing. Leo! The whole room f suddenly felt kind of empty. I'd never seen Leo mad before, but I think that's what was going on now. Leo the Silent was giving me the silent treatment. Chapter 34 Normal The next day at school wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I paid extra attention to what some of the good kids were doing and I tried to do the same stuff, some of it anyway. I showed up on time for class. I raised my hand when I thought I knew the answer, even though I was usually wrong. And I told my Zoom customers I was out of business until further notice. In Donatello's English class, I volunteered to hand out the assignment sheets. She looked at me like nothing weird had ever happened in her life. Are you trying to butter me up before your next attention? She said, because it's working. Thank you, Rafe. I just said, you're welcome. If there was some buttering involved, that was a bonus. And speaking of bonuses, Jeannie Galetta actually smiled at me when I gave her the handout. I'd been avoiding her ever since the whole underwear episode on Halloween, so I was surprised when she smiled like that. Maybe it had something to do with me being normal for a change. In fact, it seemed that Leo, sorry, it seemed that the only people who didn't like me this way were Leo, no surprise, and Alison Prouty, who kept looking at me like I was ruining her career at Hills Village Middle School's number one kiss-up. The English assignment was a vocabulary exercise. It was all about abstract nouns, or things that aren't things, as Donatello called them. The list had words like contentment, prosperity, fortitude, vastness, and stuff like that. We were supposed to work in groups to find pictures that represented what the words meant to us. It made me think about how Donatello and my mum could totally hang out. They're both into all that arty stuff. I wasn't in Jeannie's group, unfortunately, but I was still being normal Rafe, so I volunteered to be the recorder for my group. Matt Baumgarten and Melinda Truitt printed pictures from the computer and Chance Freeman looked through a bunch of magazines Donatello had brought in. I cut out the stuff they found and put it all together in a big collage kind of thing. I made the pictures fit up against each other like puzzle pieces and spelled out the vocab words with letters from the magazines. When Donatello came around to check everybody's work, she stopped and looked at ours for a long time. This is very creative, she said. Very organic. All I know about organic is the disgusting plain yogurt mum keeps in the fridge at home. But I'm pretty sure Donatello meant it was a good thing. Nobody in the group gave me credit for the idea either. And I didn't even care. 
I knew she was talking to me. So this was what normal felt like. It sure wasn't as fun as Operation Wraith, but if this is what it took to keep mum happy and off my case, then I figured it would be worth it. Too bad it lasted only one day. Chapter 35. Miller strikes again. If you've been reading carefully, you've probably noticed a kind of pattern in my life. Just when things seem to be going okay, blah blah blah. So there I was in my locker feeling pretty good about how the day had gone and getting ready to go home. I had half my stuff in my backpack and the other half in my hand when I turned around right into a big pile of Miller. In the future, when I say it's possible to have extra eyes installed at the back of your head, I'm definitely going to be the first in line. He stuck out his foot and put a hand on my back and pushed. I went down hard along with all my stuff. Careful, Miller said, you might trip and fall. Yeah, I said, you're a regular baby Einstein. Right, he said, like he thought I was serious. You ready for the meeting? What meeting? My fist, your face, he said, and pointed outside. Come on, once and for all, dirtbag. I was getting tired of this, way past tired. Maybe dangerously past it. Listen, Miller, I said, I already told you, I'm not trying to prove anything. And even if I was before, I'm done, okay? So just back off. But he wasn't even listening anymore. What's this? He bent down and picked up something from the floor. It was my Operation Wraith notebook. I hadn't even realized it had come out of my backpack until then. It's nothing, I said. Give it back. Miller already had it open to the first page. Operation Wraith, he said. What are you, six years old? I told you it's nothing, I said. I reached, but he pulled away. If it's nothing, why do you look like you're going to wet your pants, Miller said. I couldn't believe this was happening. It was supposed to be normal day one, and all of a sudden it was like worst nightmare part 13. Miller was flipping through the pages, looking at everything I'd written, and smiling just like he'd found a box of money. And that's when I saw it happen. Miller the killer had just gotten himself an idea. You could see it on his face. It was like watching a caveman stand up on his own two feet for the first time.